Hi everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Front Row on Economy.lk. Today in conversation, I have with me Eric Robertson, who is the Global Head of Research and Chief Strategist at Standard Chartered Bank. Welcome, Eric. Thank you very much. Great to be with you. Eric, if I was to get into our first question uh, for today, um, we're heading into 2021 and uh, there are a lot of things unraveling as we head into uh, this brand new year. What are some of the key global economic trends and themes you're discussing heading into 2021? Well, look, I, I think it would be um, it would be very easy to get distracted by uh, the COVID developments and the vaccine developments, which of course are, are incredibly important. Uh, we do expect a, a material improvement in growth in 2021, partially because of uh, the rolling out of vaccines. Uh, but there's another very interesting story which has been in, in development over the last couple of months, which is the improvement in emerging market growth, especially in Asia, and mostly because of trade. Um, EM exports have actually uh, recovered all the way back to pre-COVID levels, uh, which has only taken two quarters. Uh, just after the global financial crisis, the recovery in emerging market exports took about six or seven quarters. So the recovery for, for emerging markets has actually been much more robust and much more pronounced than I think many people would have expected. And we do uh, anticipate that that trend will, will continue. So we're expecting nearly 5% growth uh, for the global economy next year, up from a nearly 4% contraction in 2020. But as I said, uh, a lot of that will be led by trade and a lot of that will come from trade and, and growth within the region of, of Asia more specifically. Thank you, Eric. Um, so if you're looking at what is going on globally, we're seeing interest rates being really low. Um, with these low level of interest rates, do you think global investors will be looking for higher yields? And in that context, would emerging markets like Sri Lanka be of benefit? Well, look, that, that's a great question. Um, and in fact, it's, it's been a key topic, uh, a key theme of ours in, in, our, in our published research for the last couple of months. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, global interest rates have collapsed in, in 2020, especially in, in developed markets. Uh, in fact, an interesting statistic is that about $17 trillion of global debt outstanding now offers a negative yield. That's about 25% of the uh, global bond universe. Now for investors, that presents an enormous challenge because the idea of a risk-free asset like a U.S. Treasury still offering some yield or some return is now uh, effectively um, no longer available. Um, and so what investors are, are being forced or pushed to do is, is to broaden their horizons a little bit, both in terms of the maturity or duration that they seek, but also the amount of, of credit risk or sovereign risk uh, that they're willing to take. Uh, in the developed world, uh, investment grade credit like government bonds offers you very little yield, very little spread. So we do anticipate a significant return of capital uh, to emerging markets. Now, initially that capital will go to slightly lower yielding, but much more liquid uh, and larger economic uh, destinations. Uh, some of the benchmark emerging market countries come to mind. Um, but over time, that capital will be uh, deployed uh, further and further out the risk curve. And so to a number of, of countries in Asia, uh, Africa and the Middle East uh, who have seen significant economic and fiscal challenges this year, we do expect that over the next couple of years, uh, as markets stabilize and as economies stabilize, uh, those countries will start to be able to tap uh, investor capital again. Well, thank you, Eric. One final question um, that we have uh, looking at 2021 is the outlook for key commodities uh, like oil. Uh, what's what's the bank's view on this? And um, look, let's let's get into this commodity story a little bit because it's a it's a fascinating one and something that we've we've spent quite a bit of time thinking about over the last couple of months. And um, if I can be a, a little bit uh, general general and and sort of top down in, in my thinking. Uh, we believe the current environment will, will resemble a post-war recovery. We've had a global economic and global health crisis. And so therefore, governments are really going to deploy quite a bit of, of their fiscal uh, and monetary stimulus uh, towards the recovery of their economies. 
Now, as we talked about previously, global interest rates also remain extremely low. So we think there's quite a bit of potential uh, for capital, not just from investors, but from businesses to go back into the commodity asset class more generally. Oil, I think, is going to be a little bit more dependent on things like tourism and travel. Uh, the demand for energy products has taken quite a hit uh, in 2020, obviously, with the COVID crisis. But we do expect better oil prices going forward. Now, our base case is for oil prices next year to be in a range of, shall we say, $45 to $50 a barrel. But the uh, asymmetry around that forecast, in my mind, uh, is clearly to the upside. As we talked about earlier, uh, with the vaccines being rolled out next year, it is our hope and, and in fact, nearly our expectation uh, that we will see an improvement in both um, leisure travel as well as business travel. And, and I think that should offer quite a bit of support uh, to the energy complex more generally, but to oil prices more specifically. So a cautiously uh, optimistic outlook on oil. Thank you, Eric. Um, so I think in this discussion, we really understood from Eric's uh, point of view, some of the key um, investment trends that will take place in 2021, um, how global, un uh, global interest rates being lower will really uh, see flight or capital into emerging markets, what that overview is. And then going into the final question of uh, how, um, the, uh, how commodities will really play out in particular oil, which is a key part for Sri Lanka's uh, import bill as well. Uh, so thank you so much, Eric, for joining us uh, in conversation today. Thank you very much. Great to be with you. And to our viewers, stay tuned for similar episodes like this, where we will bring um, experts to discuss uh, the economic and business outlook.